This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. doing up here in the attic? Comedy, it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nitch. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, here to talk about 60s and 70s television. Uh, before we jump into the big uh, big extravaganza tonight. Just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Well, the uh, the mailbag certainly uh, seems to have uh, emptied out a little bit from last time. Uh, in fact, we have absolutely nothing in the mailbag, which is fortunate because right now our, our P.O. box is changing and we don't know what it is yet. So don't run into the old mailbox. We're not even going to say what it is on the air so we don't get confused. We'll have a brand new mailbox by next episode. So just Keep, uh, write the letters and have them ready to go so you, as soon as you hear the new post office box number, you can send them in. You know, I was sitting at home wondering, <laughs> why, why don't they write? <laughs> yeah. So now I know. There's <laughs> no address. So let's move into tonight's uh, big topic, which is movies of the week. Uh, certainly television movies uh, started as a kind of uh, really third-rate B-movie stuff because the movie industry hated television Exactly. <laughs> back, back in the 50s and 60s. But finally they decided, hey, we could make some money off this, the studios decided. And so we started to see tons of made-for-television films. That's what we're talking about tonight. So what do we got, uh, what do we got on this, Martin, uh, Wilbur? Well, by golly, um, there were probably some made-for-TV movies back in the 60s, but I, I couldn't really... See, I guess if you want to go back, you can look at the Playhouse 90 thing and say those were almost kind of like made-for-TV mm -hmm. kind of movies, but they... So those were more plays. live. They yeah, were, those yeah, they were live. plays, they were live, but it was still like they're on TV, mm -hmm. so it's kind of... I mean, it stretches it, but mm -hmm. you actually got to the point in the 70s, I'm going to say the 70s because I don't remember any in the 60s, where they did actually make movies for TV, specifically for TV, for the TV audience, 
they were made specifically to be two hours with the commercials and everything right. in there so it would just be for tv actually they cut them down so they were 90 minutes most of them most right. of them were 90 minutes so you had um your your abc movies of the week and you had your nbc movies of the week which where they had your nbc mystery movie right you had all these different shows and well we, i can look at the nbc mystery movie because you you started off there you had um a concept where you had three different detective shows and each week you would see one of those detectives right and you start off we had um what? mcleod mcleod and mcmillan and wife had columbo and you had columbo exactly what, what channel was heck ramsey on well, was, he was a little was, later. Yeah, they, was they, later? There, were, there was Amy Prentice, there was yeah, the they, Snoop Sisters. They had several different oh, ones yeah. after that. <laughs> there was um, a whole Tenafly. Ten uh, yeah, all those. There were a bunch of them. Um, I even think that, I almost think the Long Street even started on a kind of a movie of the week deal. Maybe on ABC. I know that Long Street was on ABC. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I was well, before we before we really jump into that, I wanted to say about the the early films about the okay. uh, the ones in the sixties. The only I, I don't remember them any more than you do, but uh, but the only ones I can uh, the ones I have down here. The first one that uh, considered the first television movie is See How They Run, starring John Forsythe and Senta Berger. Ooh. And she certainly got into fame yeah, and fortune. Don't hear and that was anymore. telecast October 7th, 1964. Okay. But the what was supposed to be the first one was The Killers with Lee Marvin, Angie Dickel Dickinson, and Ronald Reagan. Hey. <laughs> but it because yeah, it was so killer, violent. Right. Because so violent, they wouldn't show it on TV, so it got sent into theatrical release. Yeah, okay. I could watch it at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Right. Now. Right. What, you know why we probably don't remember them in the 60s? Because we, we had to go to bed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It was too. It was too late for us. That the movie's coming on. Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> or even earlier than that. But uh, yeah, you used to be able to tell that uh, something was uh, a made-for-television movie. They never said that on the air. It was always a world premiere television event. <laughs> You could tell because of the, the <laughs> wonders of, of videotape. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which just had that interesting, that interesting feel, that interesting soap opera feel, if you will. That's the way I always felt about them because it was, well, this looks like, it was filmed like a soap opera. <laughs> well, so many of them had, weren't so much to entertain, but to educate. They had a cause. Well, quite a few did. Born innocent. Quite right. a few. Um, Little Miss Spinhead, uh, no, Sarah Linda, T, Linda Blair. Uh, teenage Blair. alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. You got you got into those, and they they got into also the um, the ABC afternoon movies, which after a lot school after school special. special. The after school after specials, special. exactly. Those were oh, a those lot were of those always, had had a cause there. There was always meaning. some some underlying thing there. Mom, the Wolfman in me, you know, yeah. thing, there's, <laughs> some sort there's of something's <laughs> always going on there. Uh, which Mom, the Wolfman in me, that was based on a on a novel actually but they put it into the after school special because it's like a a teenage novel it's the teenage time to watch tv instead of watching those cartoons let's watch a movie yeah. so you got you've got that you've got that aspect then um there were the a lot of horror movies exactly really, but i mean really i mean based on today it was always it was all you know suspense and not gore at all well there you know, was no gore the, yeah really. it was it, the abc did a lot of them and i remember exactly the, yeah. <laughs> my favorite one was Smile, Jenny, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Smile, Jenny, you're dead. <laughs> now, let, tell us about that one. Let me, let me, well, I don't even remember anything about it, but I always remember, remember the, the title. You got one of those titles that's yeah. going to go away. Smile, Jenny, Jenny you're, you're dead. dead. <laughs> well, I, let me see. Gosh, there were, there were just so many. Um, um, they did several about werewolves. Like, um, oh, yeah. Oh, goodness, what is it? Like Harvest Moon or something. I, yeah. I can't remember the specific title. De no, Death Moon, I think that was one. Because mm -hmm. um, there were ones where they would, they would allude to the fact that there's a werewolf, and then it would just turn out to be some crazy person. Right. But then there was really one. That, uh, Death Moon, I think, was the one that actually had a werewolf. It was like Robert Foxworth. They were in Hawaii. And um, he actually, you actually do see him transform into a werewolf, and it was just great. And there was another one where, um, oh goodness, was, there, were, there were just a bunch of them. Then they had your 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 devil worshipper kind of things. You had your uh, 
your light um, supernatural things with um, the Amish or somebody. <laughs> you had, you had, there was one, there was a great one, movie. a great one, I think it was an NBC one. Um, uh, was wait until dark. Don't be afraid of the, don't be afraid of the dark. Anyway, you have Kim Darby. She gets into this new house, and you keep hearing these noises, and it turns out oh, to be yeah. these these little dudes that are living in her uh, in her fireplace. These little wrinkled up dudes, yeah. with little furry bodies, and they're living in her fireplace, and she's like afraid of them. Then by the end of it, she's actually learning to live with these little guys. I mean, they're they're in there, and she accepts the fact that they're in there, and they're not they're not evil. They're just little dudes that are living in her in her in her <laughs> fireplace. It was a cute little movie, and um, let's see what else. Uh, well, certainly a lot of them, uh, and the and the trend now is what we're seeing is before we had movies that they said, hey, this movie did really well and it really lends itself to a series format, mm -hmm. and so they, you saw it move that way. But now, of course, what you're seeing are things that are already series or are going to be series the next week. Yeah. And the first episode is a two-hour episode, and yeah. they say it's a movie. <laughs> it's the movie. Well, we got some good shows from. Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island. The movies are actually better. Really, the the the, than the series. The spelling Goldberg. Pretty much the whole universe came off of ABC movies, movies of, of the week. week. Exactly. Uh, I think Char probably Charlie's Angels. Started Charlie's as Angels as a, as probably a, started. Love as Boat. One. I know. I know for a fact that. Um, I, yeah, Love Boat. Can, I know. Okay, you've got like you had your theatrical movie. You had um, the Super Cops. Which right. was um, based on the a the annex of this uh, Batman and Robin right. police team, yep. mm -hmm. and they did a movie of that. And then ABC says, "Well, hey, let's take that Super Cops idea and turn it into a movie of the week, and you end up with Starsky and Hutch, yeah. which becomes a series yes, and just right. lasts for quite a few seasons there." <laughs> and the still same like thing. To see the original Fantasy Islands again. Yeah, those. Well, you can kind of catch them. Um, you used to be able to. I know they did them at late night. Yeah, and late night TV is where where you see all the movies of the week from the seventies. Quite a few of those things. Prince the Night Owl, something like that. You it was like see. Fantasy Island, Fantasy Island <laughs> 2, <laughs> Fantasy <laughs> Island 3. Yeah. They did the same way with Love Boat. It was like Love yeah, Boat, then Love, Love, Love Boat, Boat 2, <laughs> and there's Love Boat 3, and then it became the series. And let's see, what a. Um, but Love Boat always sucked. <laughs> well, it, it did really after after a bit. It, did it became really. uh, the. Um, From the beginning. It became the um, Love American style of the 70s. Of and, the 80s. Or the 80s. Well, well, yeah, because like it went all the way to 86, yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it was. It would not sink. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we don't know why. It was just, uh, just kind of every week, people would come on, and uh, it'd be the three stories, and you'd have the. The funny story, and you'd have the the romantic story, and then you'd have the the kind of serious, serious tear jerker once, story. Once in a while, yeah, the the serious story. <laughs> the two amnesiacs find each other on the love boat, or some sort of deal, you <laughs> know. Love, find out their brother. And sister. This, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> but you know, I really did that a couple of times. You have the you have the, your your standard crew, even though they change crew members for one reason or another in there. I don't necessarily have to go into that, but it's like. Uh, <laughs> Somebody would disappear, somebody else would show up who's like a long lost relative of somebody else on there, so instantly boom, new crew member. Hey That's right. Well it was fairly it was fairly stable though. I mean when you look at uh, basically you kept everybody other than of course Lauren Tweez or Tweez. Yeah. How you ever pronounced that? Tweez. I heard it was Tweez. Tweez. Well, in any case, uh, Tweez, she, Tweez, whatever. She, she went into a, a drug stupor or something. Yeah, she in treatment. So, into the boom, she's gone. And Pat Klaus comes on as cruise director Judy McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> What a, what a, Stubing's kid was on there, too. Yeah, that, she became a... What was her name? Jill Whelan. Jill. As, as after, Vicky. After, Vicky after they found out that she existed, you know. Right. Like yeah. She got this Oh, I left boat. one in the port. Oh, <laughs> well, she better come work on the boat with yeah. dad now. <laughs> oh, Captain Stubing, he's doing the Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we go. in every port, that yeah, kind of bit, you know. Going. They hit, uh, what, what, was, what were they always docking at? Uh... Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> Puerto Vallarta, <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, that's Fantasy Island. That's Fantasy Island. 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 Hey, boss, be playing. Good morning. We'll be, we'll be docking at Puerto Vallarta, and uh, you can get on and off and have another subplot out there. Here's a movie they totally missed. They totally missed having the love boat sail to Fantasy Island, didn't they? <laughs> That would have that would have been wild if they ever did. Well, they had, well, they did have. Did they have Charlie's Angels on Love Boat at one point? They might have. I'm sure, I'm sure they did. I'm sure there was. It was like 
But it was only like Captain Steubing was the only, like everybody else was on, I don't know, shore leave or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was only I, Captain Steubing. If you get too many characters, you'll end up like um, one of the, uh, the, the Crisis in Infinite Universes. <laughs> It's couldn't, it's couldn't really do that. They, they, they just, they just, the idea was just scared them, I guess. Yeah. But um, let me see, what other, um, well, one of my favorite, one of my truly favorite series that launched off of there was um, the Night Stalker thing, because yeah. that started mm -hmm. off as um, the Night Stalker, the original movie, where um, Kolchak is in Las Vegas um, investigating right. this vampire thing who ended up being Yano Skorzeny, who was actually a vampire, and he was actually out there killing people, but they couldn't prove it because when the police finally show up, here's Kolchak driving a stake into the guy's heart, so he gets in trouble for it. And then yeah, he has to move away. I hate when that happens. Try to help it's like people. he has to he has to leave town. <laughs> so they end up he's next time you see him, he's in Seattle, Washington. Boom. And it's the night <laughs> strangler this time. There's the guy who's lived down in underground Washington for years and years and years. And he comes up every oh I'll say fifty years. And yeah. he kills people to get this stuff out of the back of their neck that he mixes up to drink to Yay. last for another fifty years. <laughs> and um by the way, that was Richard Anderson, who just went on to do the Six Million Dollar Man, who was another one Steve that grew right. off of. Yeah. The, uh, but anyway, um, let, I won't go into that yet. So he ends up, he has to leave Seattle, and he takes he takes his boss Vincenzo and this girl with him. They end up in Chicago, and that's where the series starts. That's right. where the series goes on, and they just he just covered several different yeah, occult really, really and supernatural babies. things okay, from there. Okay, we did have a trend too where. They they started making made-for-TV movies from series. Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Island. And well, weird yeah. Weird stuff like that. Well, and Love and Love Boat ended up as the Love Boat Valentine's Day special movie thing, or whatever that was called. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, so it started as a movie and ended up as a movie. <laughs> so it's it's like a it's like its own self-fulfilling full circle kind of right. series prophecy kind of right. thing here. <laughs> and really, I mean, in ABC, especially in the '70s probably 80% of all its one-hour dramas or one-hour shows came off of came off of movies, yeah, movies I, of the week. I mentioned the um, Six Million Dollar Six Man. Six Million Dollar Man. That started off as, um, well, it was based on a book called Cyborg, Cyborg yeah. by Martin Caden. Caden. Okay. Isn't it Cyborg and, and um, Cyborg? No, just well, Cyborg. It was Cyborg, I think. Okay. Maybe it was I, Cyborg. Huh? No, well, that's I, I Robot. Robot. Okay, I and then there's okay. Cyborg. Okay, but anyway, um, it started off, and basically, I mean, it's the same story. Steve Austin, astronaut, he's up there, he crashes, what? and they put him back together for, oh, $6 million. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> what a title. It oh. was a deal, actually. And um, he starts off, and he's, uh, I remember in the movie, the thing that got me was the fact that, okay, he's out there, and they show him testing and everything. When he actually goes to do whatever the mission is, he's really running. Yeah. And by the time they do the series, they just say, well, he's running, but we'll slow it down. To make because it look he's like going he's so bad, fast, we you wouldn't be able to see it. So you can see him. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the original one, um, um, Darren McGavin was the guy that was in control of the, um, the organization because they put him into cryogenic sleep. At the end of the first, at the end of the movie. That's right. That's right. And it was Darren McGavin who was there, and then Darren McGavin goes on to be the nice stalker, and right. it's, it's like a full circle. <laughs> Richard Anderson, <laughs> Darren it? McGavin goes on to be the nice stuff. Richard Anderson comes away from being a nice strangler to be Oscar Goldman, who's in charge of it. And it's it's just wow, it's something. And uh, then <laughs> you've got people and getting a job. <laughs> that's right. And so they just kind of switch things there, and when um they started up with the uh, the Bionic Woman, I think they actually did. Uh, they didn't introduce her on his show. I think she had her own. Special oh movie. yeah. Oh no, no. I think they. Well, I, I think it started on his show. Did she? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. I think she's a but then wasn't it? But a, there were. But there were Bionic Woman movies. Yeah. And then there were the and Bionic. Then, the Bionic Family. Or yeah, the Bionic <laughs> reunion movies we had in the 80s. <laughs> whatever happened there. <laughs> and then it was pretty much every single Bionic thing they could have yeah, done. Was, yeah, the Bionic Russian agent versus the Bionic American agent. <laughs> That's your Bionic Bigfoot. Yeah. And, and, the Bionic and, Dog and. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was real nice, because Ted, Cass Ted Cassidy, Ted Cassidy, Ted Cassidy, Ted Cassidy, it was the Bionic Bigfoot, well, the first time, well no, Andre the Giant was the first time, right. and then it got to be Ted Cassidy, but What about anyway. Berta Benning? <laughs> well, Berta Benning, he was, uh, <laughs> by golly, he was, okay, um, 
<laughs> you got your City Beneath the Sea deal. Oh, yeah. That was, which was a made-for-TV movie, right. but it was, it was kind of spun off of the whole right. Irwin Allen thing there. Yeah. It spun off of the uh, City That was where that tunnel went to. It went to the Irwin Allen universe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a whole nother thing. <laughs> that weird tunnel that Steve would run down. Boom! He's in the Irwin Allen universe. Yeah, so there's Bird of Benning. He's in that. And then he comes over to um, The Man from Atlantis, which I think also was my Oh, that was a movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, made-for-TV yeah. movie. Almost every... Or, almost every Action adventure series, especially, was pretty much based on uh, based on some sort of movie. And then you've got your movies that were just movies that were based on um, theatrical movies, like I already mentioned. Um, well, Starsky and Hutch being based on the Super Cops. There was right. um, okay, you had your Serpico movie, which branched into um, Toma. Toma, which branched into Beretta. Beretta. And I think well, they even had a Serpico series there for mm -hmm. a little while. So you had that, which branched off of there. Then you had. Um, Another one, which was really a favorite of mine, Men of the Dragon, which was kind of loosely came off the Enter the Dragon thing and mm -hmm. had, well, it was right there in the Kung Fu era, which had a, they had a big, um, it was it was really a great movie. And then speaking of Kung Fu, you've got Kung, Kung Fu, Fu, which uh, did come off of a made-for-TV <laughs> movie. They and made just, another one, too, later on. Yeah, they did a, they did a reunion one yeah. there in the 80s where um, he came back years later, finds out. He's got a son. Kung Whoa! Was a great show. And who's his son? Why? His son is Brandon <laughs> Lee. It's just Bruce Lee's son. I mean, well, he's playing his son on it, but it was actually Bruce Lee's son. We haven't really done anything else since. But, well, that's Kung another. Kung Fu was a great show. It was. It was truly a great show. Really, really wonderful show. A wonderful show. <laughs> and you had. Show. Let me see another one. You've had. Um, well, Night Gallery actually started off as a, a three episode made for TV. Right movie thing and then right. it went on into a series for a couple of seasons which was really great it was it was it was but in i remember in the movie the uh thing was they would they showed the fact that there were three pictures here but you didn't get to see what they were until after they did the story it's oh. like they were all covered ah. and he would come up and he'd pull the cover off and they'd tell the story and then at the end of it you'd actually see the it's picture, the picture yeah. Ah. yeah which was like an interesting Sounds like it was a lot more interesting than the way they actually did it later and then, well i mean it, it was some things they should have just left <laughs> right in the movie as the movie you know as a movie as a movie and not gone on with uh well are you, how are you going to convince um tv executives of this they they won't listen. They're like they're like movie executives. They see something that works, and they want to get. They want to milk that thing for all it's worth. That's right. We're looking at sequels. We're looking at series. We're looking at. Um, it's a series. We're looking That's at right. uh, books. We're looking at lunchboxes. Yeah, T-shirts, everything. <laughs> Toys. We we want to. I think it freaked me out the first time I saw a book based on a made-for-TV movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. I like. How low can you go? No. <laughs> You've already watched the movie. Right. Why would you want to read the book? Unless you, of course, need to do it for a book report and you don't want to read the book and you've already seen the movie. Right. <laughs> there, was a, there was a series in the 60s I wanted to mention. Uh, this was the first made-for-TV movie that spawned what was very popular in the, uh, like we mentioned, NBC mystery movie. The rotating segment concept of somebody new every week, and that was the made-for-TV movie Fame is the name of the game, which spawned the, the name, name of, of the, the game. game. Okay. <laughs> with the the three, with James Franciscus. Um, let me see if I can look this up here. But I got the, Lawrence Bacon Bill was he in that? Was he in that set? I don't know. But, but the the basically the the concept was three guys who all worked for the same company, this very huge, powerful uh, conglomerate, and it would be, you know, uh, here we go. Oh, Gene so Barry, Barry, Tony Franciosa, and Robert Stack. Stack. There okay. we go. <laughs> and then that's kind of the same idea that they went on with to um, probe or search, which that was kind of a futuristic one because they mm -hmm. had it was they had that futuristic <laughs> thing in there, but it that started off as a, a made for T V kind of yeah. movie also. <laughs> right. So let's well, see. that was interesting. And then um let me see. Uh -oh. Well, I just want to mention a couple from, we, we don't want to stray too much into the 80s, but a couple, uh, well, first in the, in, the, in the 70s, we saw the kind of the end of the TV movie uh, to be replaced by the miniseries there for a while, yes. to the point that, many, you know, TV movies, you know, they, uh, they would like pad material on it to make it four hours and make it into a two-part 
miniseries, which was really just an over padded TV movie. <laughs> some some miniseries were really good with at that. Right. Like the Roots thing. But by the end, a two hour movie. By the end, by the end, they were just <laughs> like, yeah, they were just like. They got ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were really kind of. King I'll of go. King, quick, King of the uh, in the, the miniseries. Richard Chamberlain. Oh, really? yeah, true. He's done more than anybody oh, in the yeah. whole wide entire world. Although now, I, I will admit, Shogun was a very good um, oh, Shogun mini, me, er, yeah. mini series adaptation of a novel. I, that was very good. It's well, like I think Roots novels just lend a, themselves well to the... Good. Didn't they do the uh, John Jake series? And oh, the man, series why didn't they did this? <laughs> well, I know well, they did at least those two those or three of them. Those were, those, were all, those were all on that Operation Primetime, though, or something like that. Something they like weren't that. on the network. It was on... It was on the syndicated, okay. that, that but like ad hoc syndicated network they put together. Paramount kept putting thing, together. The, uh, what are they? The Chronicles of. We just don't have. The, the, the Jake Chronicles. Adams Chronicle or just something like, like that. With you the know? bastard. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that was like a big breakthrough for yeah. TV. The, the <laughs> Andrew Stevens as the bastard. bastard. <laughs> I remember that commercial. And then, um, let me see, I don't know how many of those. There's just several of those John Jakes things. You can pick them up at your local library, but there's. Several of them, and they just did two or three. Two or three, of them. <laughs> and then also, hey, there's somebody else that did quite a few of those. Um, well, let me see. Were those in the? No, Michener. Um, oh yeah. They did um, oh, Centennial, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. which was like a big, was, a, big, like big <laughs> a maxi series. Yeah, I mean, hardly well, a mini series. Books oh yeah, I mean, anyway. then you yeah, got Centennial um, was just like, oh well, it was like for about a season. NBC was like, well. Uh, that's the baseball that's... game got rained out. Put another episode of Centennial on. Centennial is like the, the movie of the week to the nth degree. Yeah. That's what miniseries are. Movie of the week to the, to yeah. the highest power. That's right. And you've got your, uh, your Irwin Shaw with Rich Man, Poor Man, Man. which was another one that was like a real... A real big one where everybody watched that and got to watch that Rich Man, Poor Man. Yeah. Ooh, what's that Nick Nolte going to do this That's week? Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Bill Bixby was in that. That's yeah, right. Was, <laughs> well, I mean, you look at Mr. Mr. TV. Uh, Robert Conrad was in that Centennial. Oh, he's oh, all yeah. over Everybody was. Ed Asner was in that. Uh, <laughs> uh, William Shatner in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had to find some place for him. I don't know. It's hard to tell when you've got uh, a... Yeah. Uh, Robert, Robert Conrad, Conrad and <laughs> William Shatner, they're like... <laughs> they, one thing, Chamberlain was in it. Nah, probably. Yeah. He was. I think mean, everybody was in those things. <laughs> one thing I wanted to list here was this, uh, this list, the highest rated movies on television. Uh, and I just want to listen to the ones from the 70s, uh, the TV movies. There's hardly any really in here. Little Ladies of the Night, Ooh. 1977. I know what that was about. Okay. Helter, Helter Skelter. Yeah. No, yeah. 76. That was a two night. Uh, do, 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 do. And and the Night Stalker. Okay. That's basically yeah. it. And, and the only other ones are really in the 80s, which we got into the uh, more the really the last few miniseries like. The day after, and V, and <laughs> the, um, your your Battlestar Galactica did start off in the seventies. Right. The, that was another one that started off as a. Well, that one actually was going to be a movie, but they did the the made for TV thing first, and then it got to be the series, and then they finally released the movie here, which was actually the first episode where they actually do have the big the big fight right. and yeah. break up and what's, start what, on their way to what's Earth. What's interesting? Another series, science fiction series, Buck Rogers. Yeah. The seventies Gil Gerard series. <laughs> It started, they, uh, they were going to put it out as a two-hour movie, TV movie, and then they put it out theatrical release yep. that summer, and then they went, boom, it's a series. <laughs> so well, they so, did that one, well, right? It's well, like they did it kind of the I episode. found something. Yes. I've got to say this. I found something on the new comedy network. Yes. I found Captain Nice. Ooh, <laughs> Captain Nice. Blood Saturdays. They're oh, yeah. They, show Quark. they have like a Buck Henry hour. They show Quark. What? Show. Wow! Captain Nice. Neato. I'll have to tune into that. But Neato. and we hope you tune into the next episode of Ass Wasteland uh, in two weeks. We don't know what the heck we're doing. We don't know, but we'll talk about it when we get on next time. We'll see you later. Good night, everybody. We'll see you. <laughs>